take it over. We should be good to go. All right, so this is our SD series class, and uh, I will give a little plug for our YouTube channel because as I hit record, I'm reminded that Robert uploads all of the uh, videos that we do. So whether it's a product class like this for our SD series or a concert like the one that Jason did the other day or anything that we do, a regular class, you know, I've taught them, uh, Joni's taught them, Joe Fontesh has taught them, Robert's taught them. There's so much uh, material on our YouTube channel. It's very, very easy to find. It's just youtube.com slash Fletcher Music Centers. Okay, and uh, maybe some one of our employees could type that into the uh, chat there. But it's very easy to find. All you have to type in is youtube.com slash Fletcher Music Centers. And all of the content that we've been doing here is viewable at any time. So if you think you want to review some of the material that you maybe didn't get the first time or you have a question about it, you want to go back and see it, or you just want to watch one of the concerts, you really enjoyed you know, Joe Fontesh's concert or Jason's concert, you just want to watch it again, you can do that on YouTube. It's going to be there forever. So uh, that's, a, that's a really cool thing. But like I said, today is our SD workshop. So we have also invited some of our easy owners to come on here because... I think, as Robert mentioned, some of the instruments operate very similarly. And so if you have an easy series, which would be like an easy one, two, three, four, or ten, or if you have one of our new SD models, very exciting, uh, the SD Discovery 3 or the SD Freedom 3, um, a lot of the features and, and functions work the same way. So we've invited all of you here, and I'm going to switch my camera over so you can see the instrument really well. And I'm going to kick it off with a little music. Really cool stuff. That was a, a big band style. So I see Steve clapping. Thank you, Steve. Um, so that's a, it's a fun instrument. And like I said, this is our brand new. You might be able to see it on the sign here. This is the SD Freedom 3. And this is the SD Workshop. So if you have an SD Discovery 3 or an SD Freedom 3, yours is going to look very much like this. And good news, if you have an easy 1, 2, 3, 4, or 10, yours is also going to look a lot like this. So that's why we invited everybody to this workshop because there are a lot of similarities between these instruments. And what I'm going to get started on first is the music styles. Uh, you guys might have heard me say before some of the things that I think are the most important are the music styles and the melody sounds. And that's something that you have on every Lowry or SD instrument. So the music styles are over here on the left. These are these blue buttons that are marked, you know, standards, country, etc. And uh, later on we'll get into the melody sounds, which are over here on the right. And I'm going to start off, the one I played there was standards. So it's very important to know how to use your music styles, because if you don't, you might end up playing, you know, beer barrel polka with a country band, and that's not going to work well. So you got to make sure you know how to use and access all of your styles, and uh, that's, that's a really good starting point. So I'm going to touch this button first way over here. This is your power button. The next one over is called home. And what home does, it's like the restart button on your computer. So you hit home, 
it just resets everything. So it takes you right back to as if you just turned it on and then we can show you some stuff to get started. So the style that I picked for that opening number there uh, was standards. So if I touch standards, I get a standards music style, right? I'll touch the intro here. Okay, now if you're on a Discovery 3 and you touch standards, that's the style that you're going to get. Okay, you have a standards or big band music style. It's designed for those kind of 40s, 30s, 40s songs, big band style. Um, very, very nicely done. These uh, intros and endings are especially cool. And so pay attention to when I'm using those. All the SD instruments got these really, really cool intros and endings that are different from a lot of the ones that we were familiar with. So that was a kind of refreshing thing for us and for you guys too, hopefully. So when you touch on the Discovery 3, you know, country, for example, you'll get a country style. If you touch mellow, you get a mellow style. Um, if you're on the Freedom, it's a little bit different. Right, so on the Discovery uh, Discovery 3, you have eight buttons over here in your music styles. And that means that you have eight different musical styles to play. And that's a lot. That's really good. That's a, that's a great starting point. It means you can play many, many different styles of music. On the Freedom here, you have nine buttons compared with the Discovery's eight. The difference is that there's a button here in the corner... It's a, it's different color. These ones are blue buttons. There's a different colored button here. It's a black button that says Styles 2. This is very important because what happens, let's pick a different genre here. I'm going to go to one called Traditional. You might be familiar with this one. So I'm going to touch Traditional. What comes up at first, and I know this by looking on the screen, right? I can always see on the display screen what style I'm going to use. It says March Polka, right? So perfect for my marches and polkas. Okay, but if I scroll down, if I use my scroll button here, I get a different traditional style, right? The first one was a march or a polka. This one's called two-beat piano. Boy, that takes me back to my piano lessons. Whew, boy, nostalgia wave there. But I mentioned this Styles 2, right? That's a very important button on the, on the Freedom 3. When I touch Styles 2, I get two more styles in traditional. I'm still on my traditional, but now I get a 6-8 march instead of the march polka. And then if I use my scroll button, I get yet another traditional style. This one's called Showtime. This is for your Broadway songs. So, for any of the people who are counting, you have four styles per button on this uh, Freedom 3 here. On the SD Freedom, you have four styles per blue button. So, that's a big deal. Remember, on the Discovery, you have one style per button. So, if you touch standards, you get standards. If you touch country, you get country. Gospel, you get gospel, etc. On the Freedom, the big difference is that you get four four styles per button. So if I go to country, I have four country styles. If I go to rock, I have four rock styles. And these are very different, right? I just showed you the traditional ones, and that went from a march polka to like the entertainer piano to a 6-8 march to a Broadway style. I mean, these are really different and very, very cool styles. So just keep that in mind. When you're, when you're cycling through your styles, whether it's Latin, rock, 3-4, on the Discovery, you have one style per button that you push. 
on the Freedom 3, you have four styles per button. Very cool. Now, for the easy folks out there, if you have an easy one, you have actually two styles per button that you have. So you have, I believe, six blue buttons over here, and each one of those is what we consider a full band style. Okay, if you touch the pianist button, then you get a different style. So you'd have two standards, two country, two three fours, etc. cetera. Um, starting with the easy two, you then get three styles per button. Okay, so if you're an easy owner, other than the easy one, you get two styles per button. If you have an easy two, uh, four, or 10, you get three styles per button. And if you have an easy three, I believe you get four styles per button. I'd have to double check that because I don't have an easy three in front of me. But for the two, four, and 10, each one, you, you get three styles because you have a full band, a pianist, and a guitarist. Now what they've done on the Freedom is they've built in some of those pianist and guitarist styles into just the regular uh, setup here. So for example, when I was on traditional and I went to the style for the entertainer, it's called two beat piano. Well, that's a pianist style. All right, you can hear the piano there. And then there are other examples of like, a, let's say a guitarist style. This is a cool one. Jason loves this song. Sure you guys recognize that one. I'll play a little bit. Very cool style. So that was for House of the Rising Sun. And for anybody who's a Freedom 3 owner, the name of the style, which comes right up on the screen there, says Rising Sun. So that gives you a pretty good idea what to play with it. So those are your music styles. No matter what instrument you have, they're always the blue buttons on the left. Just remember uh, for the SD series, if you have an, a Discovery, you touch whatever style it is and you get that style of music and you're good to go. If you have the Freedom 3, you touch one button, but remember you have four styles. So for anybody, this is so important. I can't emphasize it enough. If you have a Freedom 3, make sure that you know you have four styles per blue button that you have. And the way that you access them is by touching Styles 2 and also by using your scroll button, which is uh, just to the right of your display window. Okay. So let's move on here a little bit. Um, I'm going to go over to the melody sounds. So melody sounds are going to be found over here on the right. On some of the instruments, it will say orchestral sounds. Um, but the way they split it up is, is not an accident, right? Your left hand is by the music styles because when you play a chord, that's what it's controlling is the, is the band, the music styles. Well, your right hand is playing the melody, right? Which is the part of the song that you would sing. And so your orchestral sounds or your melody sounds are over here on the right, right? Much easier to access with the right hand. So you may have seen me push some of the buttons up here, and that's because I was changing whatever the melody sound was. So if I'm on, let's say, piano, and I want to go to strings, I could touch strings. Or if I want to go to uh, brass, you know, like a trombone or something. Okay. So what's really cool about that is that you have it laid out on the panel for you. You can touch whatever buttons you like and switch to those sounds. Now on the Discovery, the Discovery 3, if you have that instrument, what you'll notice is you have 10 buttons over here. Okay, so 10 buttons plus over on the far right you have three more which are your organ sounds. So you have 10 buttons here. It'll say like piano, guitar, strings brass, vocals, etc. 
You'll also have three buttons beyond that, which will say organ, and you'll have an option for a sweet organ, a jazz organ, and a pipe organ. And the pipe organ really sounds great. This is great for Phantom. Anybody who likes to play that? Pretty cool, huh? And uh, so any, any one of those you want to use uh, are the organ sounds. Now, the difference with the freedom from the discovery is when you touch piano, you can scroll. Remember, that scroll button is important. So you touch scroll, and I would go from a regular piano to an electric piano. All right, so I get two pianos instead of just one. If I go to guitar, I get two different guitars. All right, for brass, I get trombone, and I get trumpet. And you guys might know this, if you, if you heard people play live, you might hear that kind of vibrato or the tremolo on the instrument. Just listen to how accurate this is on the instrument here. It, it holds for a second, and then you'll hear this kind of little fluctuation, which is the vibrato. It's incredibly, incredibly authentic sounds. It's really, really well done. Then the, the exciting part, now this is for um, our easy owners as well. So you have a button over in your orchestral section that says more. Now more allows you to access different melody sounds that might not be over here. So in more, on both the Freedom 3 and on the easy series, easy one right on up the line, you're going to find stuff like accordion. You're going to find banjo, flute, right? Really nice flute. And also pan flute. Beautiful pan flute sound. Uh, French horn, different guitars are in here, harmonica different organs, honky-tonk piano. There's the entertainer, right? That would have been perfect. And for those of you guys who don't know, you know what the honky-tonk piano actually is? It means it's out of tune. That's about all it means. Honky-tonk piano means it's, the piano has gone out of tune. Perfect for some of those old like saloon tunes or New Orleans style or entertainer, whatever you have. So Anyway, just make sure if you have that button under your orchestral section here, your melody sounds, make sure you explore by touching the more button and then scrolling through because that's how you get it. Remember, Lowry and SD Instruments both touch and scroll, touch and scroll. So if you touch a button and you can scroll, that means you have more than one option. Like here on, on mallets, for example, I have bells and vibes. Those are two completely different instruments, right? Even though they're both under mallets, right? So I have vibes, great for uh, maybe a jazz song or something. And then bells might be good for uh, maybe Christmas music, right? And I know about 43 people are groaning and, oh my God, it's not time for Christmas yet. It's okay. Just one little one. So does anybody have questions so far? Because those are the big parts of any instrument are the styles and the sounds. So if you know how to access all of your music styles and you know how to change your orchestral sounds, you're off to a really, really good start. So does anybody have any questions so far on that stuff? Yes, Especially I if do. You have an, I do. Yes. That uh, Charles? Yes. On the easy two, you said there are two styles for each button um on the easy two you actually have three per button how do you get to the various styles so if you were to touch uh standards for example you uh -huh. have uh, standards pianist standards guitarist and standards full band so each one of those are are a different style even though okay. it's under the same button okay Got it. Um, it's it's a little confusing because what happens? Um, any of the easy owners um, from you know, Easy One, you have the full band and uh, pianist. Even though it doesn't say full band, if you own an Easy One and you just touch standards, you'll have the full band style um, plus the pianist option. From okay. two on down the line, you'll also have the guitarist option. And at first glance, it kind of seems like 
Well, it's standards is the style, and then I can either have the full band or just the piano player or just the guitar player. But that is not true at all, even though it seems like it should be. Each one, full band, pianist, and guitarist, is a completely separate style. Good, thank you. All right, now where are you I would encourage you to explore all of those. It looks like uh, Susie has a question. Susie. Yes. My question is, um, on an easy four, what is the Vibra button? It's right there. Over oh, the Vibra, Vibra Trem, is that what it says? Yes. Yeah, Vibra Trem. So that's a good question. Actually, that's a, a good uh, lead-in for, um, for a feature that's here on the uh, Freedom as well. So in case anybody couldn't hear it, what, the question was, what is the Vibra Trem button? Now, if you have uh, a Freedom 3, it's going to be called Organ Tremolo, and it's right here. I don't know if you can see me pointing. It's the button about dead center of the organ. Um, on the easy instruments, it can vary in location, but it should say Vibra Trem. And what that means yeah. is on a lot of the organ sounds, you can have... Uh, it's a, it used to be called a Leslie speaker. I mean, it still is called a Leslie speaker, but it's it's a, a, a speaker that rotates around like this, and it can go either fast or slow. So if I put on an organ sound, and I just hold a, a chord here, if I turn on tremolo, it'll change the sound because it'll it'll start spinning faster. Mm. Or if I do it on the pipe organ, Thank you can you hear it too. Faster, right? mm. But check this out. That's with that's with no tremolo. Now with tremolo. Oh, here you hear the difference? No. 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 Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hang on. I'll 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 do it while I hold the cord. Sounds the same. Well, it, it is different, I promise. Maybe it's not coming over Zoom, but I would try it on yours. Make sure you hold down a, a note or a chord and then touch your tremolo. It basically just changes the speed of the, of the rotating speaker, but um, it's not something I would worry about too much. It, it will come on and off uh, by itself, uh, you know, when it's supposed to. So if it's not something you feel like messing with, you never have to, but that is what it does. I have a question. What do you mean? I don't think you can hear me. I'm sorry. Hold, hold on just one second. Can you can you guys all still hear me? Yes. Yes. Well, everyone here can hear me. I don't know. My staff is telling me that they can't hear me. Well, too bad. They already know this stuff. So did somebody say they had a question? I'm sorry. I do. Yes. Richard and Karen. Richard and Kara, hi. What can I, what can I do for All you? Right. Could you, would you, it be possible for you to go over on the easy four and demonstrate using those buttons for a song? Uh, which, which buttons are you talking about? Oh, I'm just confused on how to uh, make the different, you know, you want to maybe go from a piano to a, to, to a wood sound. How do you do that? Sure. So it's actually the same on the easy four as it is on here. Um, and, and the, the other easy instruments too. So let me see if I can get my camera maybe a little bit closer. I was saying to one of the groups the other day, one of the things I've gotten really good at is not tripping over wires. You wouldn't believe how many cables and wires you got running through here. So this might not be perfect, but I don't want to rip the camera out. Um, on the right side of any instrument, doesn't matter what Lowry or SD instrument you go to, our melody sounds are always going to be over here on the right. So, and it doesn't matter what you've selected over here. So I'm not going to even turn on a style. I'll just touch, for example, piano. Okay, so you can see piano got lit up here. Oops, sorry, I had my pipe organ on still. So piano is going to sound like this. All right, I'm on the electric piano right now. If I want to change to strings, I would touch strings. And you can see it switched. Here's piano, here's strings. If I wanted to go back to those bells, I want vocals. So whatever sound you want, you can touch. And then if there's, keep in mind, like I, you said you had an easy four, you don't just have one piano or one mallet or one string. You have, uh, I believe, four different sounds. 
So if you touch and then scroll, use those scroll buttons. So for example, on here, I have two options. Like I have electric piano or grand piano. Or I have trumpet or trombone. So I have two options per button. On the easy four, you have, I believe, four different uh, options per button plus more, which is going to give you a couple dozen more. Does that, does that answer the question? Uh, when you very first start, after you turn on your organ, then do you always push the home button first? Nope. Nope. Because when you turn it on, that's basically the equivalent of touching the home button. The home button is great for like, if you've, let's say you're exploring an instrument, this is especially good for people who are newer to their instrument. Like if you just got a new one and you've touched a bunch of buttons and you think, oh my gosh, how did I get here? Oh my God, it's not working. This is a great time to just touch home. It just gives you kind of a fresh start, just a reset to get you back onto square one. Okay. But if you're just turning on the instrument, you definitely don't need to do home because that's, you've just turned it on. Okay, thank you. All righty. Does anybody else have any questions so far? All righty. Well, I'm going to keep on. Oh, we got one from uh, Phyllis. Phyllis, if you can unmute yourself, you should be on here. Okay. Can you hear me now? I, I can. Hi. Hi. Uh, on the right side, if you want to change the instrument, in dirt throughout the song you can do that i thought i oh, saw yeah. you do it i never yep. did that. I realize that it's especially good for shorter songs you know if you're in conductor magic or if you're in red book two or something like that some of the songs are kind of short and so you might want to play them two or three or four times in a row and so if you change the sound it kind of gives some musical interest to it no I'm, what i mean is if you started out with um piano and and then you want to Add trump. You want to change to trumpet, like after yeah. the song. just yep. go change it. For sure, okay. anytime you want. Okay, thanks. And that's why we call that first class uh, conductor magic because remember you are the conductor of your instrument. You know we we call it conductor magic for a reason because it's you're not just playing. You know if you were a piano player or something it would be maybe a little bit different um, because you're just playing the piano. Or if you're playing a traditional organ, it would be kind of the same because you're just playing organ. Well, here you have an entire orchestra. So you have the option to change from a, the piano player to the vibes player to the trumpet player or wh whatever you like and whenever you like for that matter. And that would be done over here uh, with the except. Well, you can do this on the easy 10 also, but if we have any easy 10 owners, you also have setups in the middle here. Um, we won't get into that today because that's a, a separate feature, but just know that if you do have those setup buttons here, numbers one, two, three, four, five, you have some additional options for your uh, setups. But that does kind of segue me into my next point, which is a quick one. And that's if you have uh, uh, an SD instrument, so the Freedom 3 or the Discovery 3, you have a button here, maybe you can see it's lit up, this blue button in the middle called Auto Setup. And all I want to say about that is it gives you one sound in this case, it's going to be on the upper keyboard, or if you have the Disco 3, the Discovery 3, it's going to be on the lower keyboard on the right. It gives you a perfect melody sound for whatever style you pick. So if I were to just turn the instrument on and I touch ballad, it gives me a perfect setup for ballad. All right, if I touch Latin, perfect for Latin. I touch rock, perfect for rock. Now the difference in uh, the Estes versus the Lowry is that the SD, it's called auto setup. On the Lowry instruments, if you have an easy series, it's called style setup. Okay, so style setup if you have an easy, auto setup if you have a Freedom 3 or a Discovery 3. And the, the point being that it gives you a perfect sound for whatever style you pick. And then as the, the last uh, lady asked, if you want to change that, you can come over here and touch any of your buttons and that'll change your melody sound to something that you want in that, at that point in the song. Okay. 
Um, I did also want to mention a lot of your instruments. In fact, if you're on this uh, class, it should be every every single person should have built in songs to your instrument. Um, if you have the Discovery 3, you're going to have 10 songs built in. If you have the Freedom 3, you're going to have 30 songs built in. Um, now, the easy instruments are going to vary. I believe the easy one has 10, the easy two has 20, I think the easy four has 30, and the 10 has 40. I'd have to double check my math on that one, but I believe that's correct. But they all work the same way. If you go into the center and you touch songs, okay, you can scroll to whatever song you want. Remember Lowry's and Estes, touch and scroll. So we'll find a fun one here. How about... Uh, Oh, I said Beer Barrel Polka before. How about that one? So if I select Beer Barrel Polka and I want to hear that song. There we go. Now you can see I'm not playing. It's playing the song for me. It's also changing the chords. Okay, so I'm going to touch stop there. So you have that option, and it, it's uh, the same songs that are in your Lowry books. Okay, so the first 10 are the Conductor Magic songs and, and so forth. So if you have the red books, it'll follow that. And you can listen to what all the songs are supposed to sound like. Okay, so that's really cool. It, it's a great opportunity, especially if you're newer to the hobby and you don't necessarily know how every song goes. It's a great kind of built-in feature that you can touch and just see how it goes or if you're you know let's say reading a book or you're cooking dinner and you want some background music well you listen to some of the songs from your class and you'll uh, have a great opportunity to even educate yourself further because i'm telling you just by listening to the songs you're you're going to be a better player just by listening because you'll have a better idea of how it goes now i did want to mention too on the freedom here it has this brand new feature it wasn't on any of the other instruments, and it's a button here that's called Melody Off. So this is very, very cool. If you're a Freedom 3 owner, make sure you pay extra close attention. So if I'm picking a song, let's say I want to play, which again, I just touched the Songs button. All right, and I'm going to go to, let's go to, oh, we'll do Spanish Eyes. That's a nice one. Okay, so I'm going to touch Start, and it's going to start playing the song. Now, about halfway through, I'm going to touch this button that says Melody Off. And what that does is, as you might be able to guess, turns the melody off. Why would I want to do that? Well, if you want to play the song with the right hand, like as a kind of a practice thing, and have the chords still change for you, like Spanish Eyes, that second page, it's a little tricky with the chords. So when I touch Melody Off, I'm going to start playing the melody. So check this out. This is very cool. Here's my intro. So the instrument's playing right now. Now I'm going to touch the melody off button. The melody will stop. All right, listen to this. See how it went off? Now I have to play. It's changing the chords. Make it jump back in if I want. So how neat is that? Isn't that so cool? It's, it's a great, we, we used to call them teacher features because it's like taking the teacher home with you. It's like being able to play a duet where the teacher plays the chords and you play the melody. So on the Freedom, you've got those 30 songs. You can do it with any of those songs that you like. So I think that's a great feature especially coming from the teacher perspective. So that's, that's a great teacher feature. Um, I did want to mention a couple of other features too. Um, these are on many of the easy instruments and also on the Freedom here. 
And one of those is the harmony feature. So the harmony feature is gonna be all the way over here on the right. So I think you can see it maybe if I change my camera just a smidge here. You'll be able to see it on the far side. All the way to the right, you're gonna have purple buttons or one purple button that says harmony. And what the harmony feature does is it's gonna give you extra notes. So if I were to play traditional style, meaning I had to do all the stuff myself, let's say I was playing Ode to Joy, right? Sounds pretty good. And if I add my easy, easy chord, right? But it used to be, if you wanted it to sound really good, you had to play something like this. And I don't know about you, but when I was first learning the hobby, I, I couldn't play with three fingers or four fingers at a time. So that's why they invented the harmony feature. The harmony adds those extra notes in for you, so you still play just the one note, and it plays all the other notes. This is like, you know, a, a semester in college, and you get it in one button. So if I touch my easy chord, and I select harmony, I'm gonna turn on trio harmony. Okay, listen to the difference. Let me play it first without. Now with. Can you hear that difference? I mean, isn't that incredible? And I was playing the same notes, just one finger. And all you have to do is, if you want that big full sound is you turn on your harmony button. Now if you have an easy two, you're gonna have uh, what they call duet or uh, harmony. Uh, you can think of it as a duo, you know, two, two notes. So if you play a note, it'll give you an extra note. Um, you're also going to have what they call AOC, which is a total of three notes. And uh, it, that's going to be on the easy uh, uh, four for the first time and the easy three as well. If you, uh, if you have an easy four, you're also going to have rock harmony and uh, I believe uh, octave harmony as well. If you have a 10, you're going to add another two harmonies to that. But the important part is that you know that if you touch the harmony button, you have a couple options here. Um, it's going to give you those extra notes for that big full sound. And what's even better, if you don't remember to do it, on some of your bigger styles, it's going to turn on automatically with your auto setup or your style setup. So for example, if I go to uh, one of my favorite styles that I showed you, or I don't know if I did show that today, the Showtime, the Broadway style, it automatically comes on here with the trio harmony. If I go to um, Gospel, it's going to come on with duet harmony. So those harmonies will come on automatically, but you can always turn them on or turn them off if you like. Okay. And I think I got time maybe for a couple more things here. I'm trying to cram so much. There's so much cool stuff on these instruments. Believe me, when we saw these for the first time, we were just blown away. So there's so much to try to cover in one session. But um, as I said, you know, check out our YouTube channel because this will be recorded. So even if it feels like we're moving kind of fast today, you can always review the information at a, at a later time. But I did want to mention this. If you have an instrument that says feature, okay, it's usually just to the right of the window. Feature means that you have the opportunity to go into your screen and do more stuff. Okay, if you don't have the feature button, it means whatever's on the panel, that's what the instrument can do. And it's a lot, right? But if you have the button that says feature, you have the opportunity to do a couple of other things too. So for example, have you guys ever noticed when you're playing, I'm gonna put back on a piano sound here. Have you ever noticed when you're playing and uh, sometimes it sounds really nice like this and other times it sounds kind of like this and it's not real even? That's because there's a feature called touch or keyboard touch. What that means is that it's, if it's on, it's meant to replicate the actual touch of a piano. Now, I don't know if anybody has a show of hands if you were a, a, an actual pianist before you started, but I can tell you it's probably less than half a percent of our students. Um, so most of our students do not like to have the touch sensitivity turned on. If you have an instrument with that feature button, 
you can go in and turn that touch off because what that means if it's on is that it's touch sensitive to the key so you hear that got louder it all has to do with how hard you strike the key when it's off which is what our students usually prefer it makes a uniform sound so if you have that option you can go feature and then scroll until you see touch and then select and then turn the touch off and I can tell you that that's what most of our students prefer because that means it's just easier on your fingers it means you don't have to work as hard to push the keys down and it just makes a more even sound throughout your your playing if you have feature on. if you have uh well feature is feature is the way to get there feature is like your whole menu right um touch then you go to touch and then touch is what you want to turn off mm -hmm. okay and then one last one here this is one of my favorites too again this is in the feature menu and this is the transpose this is really cool because what you can do is play a song and then in the middle of it you can actually change the pitch of the song by doing transpose uh my my coworker here Joni called it a musical lift and i think that's a perfect term for it because what happens is when you transpose up it gives the whole song this boost and it just kind of really takes it home. Usually I do it near the end of the song. So let's say we're doing a, I haven't really done any slow ones today. I'm gonna do a quick slow one. I'm gonna play Over the Rainbow for you, just the middle part. But what I'm gonna do is when I get to the, the last part of the song, I'm gonna hit that transpose. And you can see when, as soon as I touch it, you're gonna hear, just picture this big musical lift right at the end. It's really, really cool. So this is the transpose feature. I just got there by touching feature scroll to transpose and then when i'm ready to do it i touch up on the scroll so check this out did you get that you hear that big lift I mean it really gives a cool boost to the song and usually you do it right at the end and there are some other applications for that but um, that's that's when I usually like to use transpose so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up there with the info but does anybody have any questions I'm happy to take uh, any questions that anybody has I have a question all right is this uh, Richard Yes. Karen, yes. My, my question is, you made it look so easy, but don't you have to, um, don't you have to preset the buttons before you're going to play a song? Like if you wanted to have the woodwinds in and you wanted to have violins, don't you have to preset all that before you start playing the song? If, if you do want a specific woodwind, then yes. Um, you can always just touch the button and it'll go to some category of woodwind or some category of piano or what have you. But if you, let's say you want like electric detuned piano two, then you would have to set that up ahead of time. Yes. And then you would just hit the piano button and that would already come up. Yep. And, yep. and also for the winds on the bottom when you're playing, that would yep. come up too. Okay. Thank you. Well, not, not on the bottom keyboard though. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Um, if you're changing the buttons, the, Setting up the lower keyboard is much more difficult. It's that is maybe another workshop in itself. But what the easier thing to do, in my opinion, is just to plan out whatever you want over here on the right. Um, so if you want a piano, you select whatever piano you'd like. If you want a specific guitar, you select that and kind of go down the line and then just know that everything will be on your upper keyboard. Um, it is possible to do the lower keyboard too, but if you're on a four and you're programming it yourself it's it's a little bit more challenging in real time to do that 
that's it's very confusing to me. It it is a little confusing. It, basically, it involves holding the button that you want for the upper keyboard, and then while you're holding it, then touching the other button for the lower keyboard. So mm -hmm. doing that while you're playing a song is is not ideal. Okay. All so right, that's that, that's why I would recommend just setting it up and then just using the upper keyboard. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? All right, Phyllis. Nope, we can't hear you. You got to unmute yourself there, Phyllis. That's right. There we go. Hello. The volume buttons on the left mm -hmm. is for the or, is for the chords, and the and the volume button on the right is for the orchestra sounds. However, when I go to the volume on the left, it doesn't make much of a difference. Or does uh, wh it, which instrument are you on? Are they separate or are they? I'm on um, Discovery Three. Okay, so the the volume on the left that you have, um, I believe, did I write that down? You should have master and a comp on the left. Is that right? Yes. So the master volume controls everything. Uh, no matter what's coming out of the instrument, master is everything. Right um, and left, even the melody. Everything. Ah, every okay. single thing. Even if you're just listening to the songs, um, the master volume is going to control every single thing. Um, the accomp or accompaniment volume controls your band. So basically everything except for your drums. Um, even though some people would like to think that the drummer is part of the band. But in this case, the drums have right. a separate volume and then the uh, accomp covers the rest of it. And that actually is a good, a good point real quick before I uh, start. The other Right, yeah. next to the, right next to the orchestra, it's, there's another volume up and down. And that and that's just for your orchestral sounds, just for the melody. And, but the accompaniment is also for just the orchestra sounds, right? Well, the accompaniment is for, th think of it this way. So your accompaniment is like, like pretend you're Barbara Streisand. You're going out for a big concert in Vegas, right? So th the lead sound, which is like what, what she would be singing, right? The lead of the show is your orchestral melody sounds. So that's what that volume controls, that orchestral volume. And, and only that, only like the Barbara Streisand singing in front, whatever, whatever melody sound you've picked. So whether that's piano or brass or whatever, the accompaniment it would be Barbara's backing band. Whoever is in the orchestra behind her would be in your music style. And that's what the accompaniment would be. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Like the chords. Yes. Chords yep. Okay, thank yep. you. You're welcome. And I did want to mention real quick, because that was a good uh, a good lead-in, um, on the discovery here, or sorry, I'm on, on the freedom, you might be able to see we have four different colored volume controls here. There's the red, orange, blue, and gray. And that is the master, the bass, the style, and the lower keyboard. So they've split that off. So you still have the master, but on the discovery, you've got all of these three buttons lumped into one, which is they call accompaniment. That's the same thing on the uh, easy series too, until you get up to the four and the 10. And then once you get up here, instead of just one button for accompaniment, you can actually control the volume of just the bass up or down or the style, which is most of the band up and down or just the lower keyboard up and down. So that is a little bit of a difference from the discovery versus the freedom and also the easy one and two versus the four and the 10. Okay. So hopefully that helps some people if you're looking at your volume settings. Do we have any other questions from anybody? All right. It doesn't look like we have any other questions. I did want to do just a couple of announcements. I really am happy that everybody joined us today. Right. Um, yeah. Before you do that, I want to take a picture of, uh, of the gallery. I need everybody to just okay. smile and wave. Smile and wave. Okay. That's good. Thank you so much. Oops, did you just t take the picture just then? Did I did I go back to speaker view too fast? Probably. Uh, no, I'm, I'm doing it again. We'll do it again. All right, on the count of three, 
Smile and wave. Okay, thank you. All right. Got it. <laughs> you may be uh, you may be used as a form of advertisement. So hopefully you're smiling. You'll have to run it by my agent first, Robert. Okay. And I'm going to put my famous, this is my new look. Are you ready? That's my new Ooh. look. I colored my hair. Nice. <laughs> I see that. All right. Well, I did want to tell you guys about a couple of things here real quick that we got coming up. Um, we have our weekly variety class. So hopefully you guys are signed up for that. If you're not, you should be. Get in touch with uh, your local staff. And uh, we do every week, we do a class on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And then the same class is repeated on Thursday at 2 o'clock. So you would come to one or the other, depending on your schedule. And so if you're not signed up for one of those, make sure you talk to somebody at your local store and get signed up. Because this week, we got our very own here from Sun City Center, Jason Bontrager, will be teaching those classes. And you may have seen him this past Friday on our Zoom concert. So if you enjoyed his Zoom stuff, you'll, you'll really enjoy the classes. He's going to talk about some of the stuff that he did. And I'm assuming most people here are, are fairly new to the hobby. If you have an EZ or, or an SD instrument, you probably haven't been around for 15 or 20 years like some of our other students. But this is stuff that applies to everybody. So make sure you're signed up for those classes and that you come to either the Wednesday or the Thursday class. And then on Friday, we have a really good concert artist coming in. It's, it's me. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. But I, I will be there. I will be playing our concert this Friday at uh, 2 o'clock right here from Sun City, and we'll be broadcasting that on Zoom uh, as well. So I think that's about all the announcements that I have. I will uh, turn it back over to Robert for just a second if you have anything. I don't have anything other than show up to Brian's. We decided to do Brian's uh, concert this Friday. We tried one about three or four weeks ago. And we were trying to do things, and we had some technical issues. It was the first time we did something from the corporate office and, and we didn't ever, we didn't have a chance to record it. So we wanted you to come back. We will figure, we'll consider that a rehearsal. So now you have to really do there well. You go. So you'll be receiving uh, three email reminders on that this week. And then uh, we want to get our, we want to push the 200 uh, uh, threshold. We haven't had more than 200 attendees yet. So tell your friends, tell your neighbors uh, if they need, to sign up for our uh, links, they can uh, uh, join our Facebook page. I have a link there that they can register and they'll make sure that they automatically get a link to the Zoom. Uh, so with that said, I think you should finish off a little quick song though. I will, and I just wanted to piggyback off something you just said though, about forwarding to your friends and neighbors. For all these Zoom classes, or not the, the classes, but the concerts, um, if you guys wanna forward that email, these uh, concerts are free to attend. And so if you want to get one of your uh, uh, friends or neighbors or family members and say, hey, we got a, we got a concert coming up this, uh, this Friday at 2 o'clock, all you have to do is forward that email because it's not exclusive. You can, you can just click that link and anybody that has uh, Zoom can join in and, and get in on the concert. So uh, I will also say real quick that if you um, do want to review this material, I wanted to remind everybody that we do have that YouTube channel and so that's youtube.com slash Fletcher Music Centers. That's centers with an S. So if you go there, you can review this class or Jason's concert from last week or Joe Fontesh's classes or anything that you like and uh, catch up on some of the material or music that you might have missed. And if there's stuff that you, you know, you think even after reviewing it, man, I, I still am a little confused. Make sure you get in touch with your local staff. We are all offering one-on-one -on -one help sessions and or smaller classes to get you involved at the store. So if that's an option for you, make sure you take advantage of that. And if it's not, make sure you stay up on our Zoom classes. So having said that, I will leave you with a little Broadway medley. And thank you so much for joining us on our SD workshop and the beautiful Freedom 3.
man, that was Ooh, rocking let's out give here. Give it a round of applause. You can unmute yourself. Let's give it Thank up, everybody. All righty. Great to see everybody today. Thanks again for coming. Thank you, Brian. Like Good lesson, Brian. Catch you later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. We'll yeah, see I'll you guys soon. Teach like that. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll Bye -bye. see everybody soon. Bye-bye. You're my hero. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.